Hello guys and welcome. That's the end of the advert there, apparently. Apologies for the, the, the long-winded ad and uh, the delay. Next time I'll play it a little bit earlier. Lacoste, we're ready. I'm ready. It's been a while, Gary, since you and me cast it together and it's been a while since we were on Twitch as well. So welcome back, guys. And uh, we're gonna hop into the draft. Oh, I'm surprised Team Spirit actually banned out uh, Phantom Assassin because I was checking the Dota buff uh, of Vega Squadron. They have 0-5 with Phantom Assassin. But oh, the, what? The most successful Got hero in this patch. Back. Jeez. How is that possible? I don't know. <laughs> I actually have no clue. How do you go 0-5 with Phantom Assassin? I, I guess here it's the fact that, you know, Vega could have had the Magnus PA opener, potentially. Maybe Team Spirit didn't want to grab it themselves, but uh, first of all, you know, you mentioned we're back on Twitch. We absolutely are. We've got to answer Pimp Muckle. This is not Facebook. JJ, welcome to Twitch. A brand new experience for you all as we uh, bring the ESL qualifiers back. Vega Squadron up against Team Spirit. Banned so far, Rubik Kotal, Io, Sand King, Terrorblade, PA, Undying, Lich, Axe, and Lone Druid. And some early... Early pickups of very aggressive heroes from Team Spirit, it feels like. Lots yeah. of stuns. I'm gonna tell you a story. Today I woke up Blessed. and uh, I drank some water and the first thing that came to my mind is why is Venge not picked? Like th this hero definitely nerfed but still received a uh, little bit of buffs with uh, her swap and uh, the illusion that she spawns, so I'm actually glad to see what this hero can do in a, in a pro match. Uh, I don't see it in pubs as well, because people just tend to pick uh, the heroes that are popular and the uh, pro players that are playing it. So mm. Th This is really aggressive, as you said. A lot of stun, a lot of lockdown, no big cooldowns uh. besides the Beastmaster ulti, so they... Are probably Five trying to play to more me. around uh, Magnus's RP. Try to bait it. Uh, also, big cooldown on Winter Vibrant Ulti as well. And uh, they have a lot of auras, Venge, Beastmaster. So they might try to finish this game early on against Anti Mage after he gets Battle Fury. This is the time when he's the most vulnerable hero. I I'm I'm looking at like a Lycan here from Team Spirit, honestly. It could be. Yeah, that that would be a good ban. Also, nice ban uh, on the Lone Druid as yeah. well. Like, with all the auras stacking up in a beast, Vengeance aura, picking a Lycan or a Lone Druid at the end there really could have tied this together for Team Spirit quite nicely. But I, I've seen... I, I think in my bracket, Venge is starting to become, like, a little bit more popular. I, I've seen a lot more of the kind of triple Wraith bands into uh, into things like even, like, S&Y or Venge. Vlad's or... Uh, so that's a core Venge, right? Kind, yeah, kind of the position three yeah. uh, Venge that, that can get very aggressive. But yeah, the fact that you don't need Ags to have that illusion, and Ags now allows you to cast spells from the illusion, you have a permanent hero on the field with just that Venge. Uh, they could also get the Drow Ranger. She's still in the pool. Even though they only have uh, one, two, me two melee heroes, and uh, they're going to be three range, so Marana and the Venge are going to benefit from the aura. I love the Dragonite pickup. Uh, he's tanky. If Once he gets a BKB... I feel like they're kind of lack damage to kill him if it comes to that. Also, the hero that uh, almost never loses the lane. Yeah, he's incredibly potent right now, especially with these triple or quadruple bracer builds, right? He's got like 60% magic resistance and 40 armor and HP regen. Yeah, I, I think getting kill. just two bracers on Dragonite is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. is enough. You don't need more. But feel, it feels like same with Kanka. Once uh, they hit level 6 with the boat, um, for Dragonite it's uh, even earlier with the Dragon Blood. Uh, you just can't gank the hero. He becomes so tanky, you need to move a lot of resources on the map, uh, move uh, 3, maybe even 4 heroes to kill him. It's like that old school Viper threat. You can never gank Viper as just one or two people. A couple of TP rotations, you're going to need the full squad to bring down heroes like DK and Kunkka. Hey, Huskar, another one. I mean, that, that would have been pretty nice here with all of those auras. And so far, nothing really that would have dealt with him particularly well. Final pick up for Vega Squadron, though. And we're looking for their position four, it feels like. Something to go along with the Magnus. Shadow Shaman is one that comes to mind quite often with the, uh, the very heavy-hitting ranged right clicks being empowered up by Magnus, literally. They need a hero that can make a lot of space early on. 
the, uh, I'm surprised this hero survived the the whole stage. And an OD against the DK. It's been a while since we've seen ODs. But it's it, it's just one of those heroes that got changed so significant uh, significantly that the item bills that you used to buy got completely ruined. And now people are still trying to figure out what the what ideal, to buy, yeah, it, what what to buy exactly. Most of the time, people tend to go for either Midas uh, into straight hex. I, I've seen Yasha, Yasha Kaya mm -hmm. it was like a really good item on OD. Uh, just casual four staff. Uh, I don't see people going for Pike that often anymore. But uh, it feels like this hero is still in in a in a very strange position. I would say because yeah. Uh, if someone, if, if let's say no one is playing this hero, the hero is going to look amazing. But if someone else is playing the hero, it could also look really bad. The win percentage of OD, uh, when I checked it, like uh, it was like thirty-one or something. Yeah, right? it was really low. It was super low. But uh, against the Dragonite, that was a kind of an old-school uh, classic counter. Does well in the laning stage. Also, his astral really good against the dazzle in general. When he uses the grave, he just puts him under and then kill him when, when he gets out. Like o overall, right? You mentioned the DK as that natural counter that the OD has always been just through Arcane Orb. Then you've got Cold Embrace from the Wyvern. OD deals with that quite nicely. Yeah. You've got Anti Mage who suffers to the the, the pure damage, the the just raw firepower of the OD coming out. But yeah, I, I still think it's the uh, the kind of itemization is a little bit awkward. I, you know, I've seen drums, I've seen braces, nulls, I've seen radiance, San, uh, Yashikaya. Ra yeah, radiance on OD because you have the life steal from your from your bloody spell name. Hello, brain. S yeah, spell <laughs> Equilibrium. <name>. Line. <laughs> tell me, tell me what to say. I've forgotten the name. Deary me. So it's gonna be a mid dazzle. They're gonna swap things around. That's. Uh, that's pretty good. You don't want to have a Dragonite. Uh, I mentioned that Dragonite barely loses the matchup, but against a hero like an OD or a Monkey King, he he has a lot of trouble. So yeah, he gets slammed pretty and, hard. Yeah, and they're swapping the lanes. What it seems to be. Everyone's moving around. So we have maybe next time on the Magnus boots first, skewer level one, position four Magnus, Kezu on the three Dragon Knight, and like you mentioned, Mage on the mid Dazzle. We'll see what he gets up to there. Peksu down bottom, the position 5 Wyvern with Madara on the anti-mage. Uh, Team Spirit already setting up, looking for a bit of a battle around that bottom bounty rune. FNG Beastmaster, Biver on the Tusk, Hester Joe Marana. We'll come back down to this bottom lane in a second. Uh, Skitter on the Vengeful Spirit, so it is, it is a core Venge, but a position 1. And then 9 on the OD is lurking down bottom as 4. But I, I, I want your thoughts on this FNG Beastmaster. Yeah, I didn't even see that he's playing the Beastmaster, so... <laughs> I mean, we can see in the previous patch as well that uh, people were experimenting with the uh, greedy picks, how much... Uh, well, how much greedy arrow. heroes, nice arrow, nice, nice bait by Boar. Oh, well, they get the kill. <laughs> Bounty runes grabbed up by the AM though, so Vega get three. It was ours all along. Uh, this is gonna be good for Team Spirit on bottom. Marana got, uh, got the last hit, so she's gonna get... Uh, Almost two th two thirds of a raid band and uh, gonna harass a lot. So this is gonna be Magnus with the boots of speed. That's gonna be position four Magnus, just empowering anti mage. These uh, these lanes are all swapping around. Yeah, anti mage does get caught bottom. A quick little little punch into arrow there coming out of Hester Joe and Biver. Maybe next time. And they're even bringing Pexu down here to make up a defensive tri lane around the anti mage. It's, it's such a a wonky looking game though. Biver gonna turn around with the tag team. Madarat does have to blink away. Has to Joe no arrow, no leaps. They are still level one, so continuing this fight seems a little futile there. And Team Spirit will just fall back. But mid lane OD up against the DK now. So Team Spirit, they get that matchup 1v1 mid. Top lane, Mage Dazzle is all alone. And FNG is here with the body blocks and the boar slowing. Skitter with the wave of terror, that minus armor. A few more clicks coming the way of Mage. It oh. looks like he'll be able to slip through that tiny gap. Almost. They needed just half of seconds for Creeps to block him there. He didn't even have Tangos, and now they're swapping lanes back again. That <laughs> back to me. They don't want to have a Dragonite uh, against OD from uh, Vegas' perspective. And, oh. uh, oh. 
Magnus uh, missing skewer on the bottom lane. He nearly had two of them, but it's one of those moments where it's it's both or none. The nice little split from Team Spirit gets them out of danger of that skewer. So if you can pull off uh, something like this, position 5 Panda, position 5 Sanking, today Secret Plated, position 5 Beastmaster, something tanky that has uh, a really big uh, team fight oriented ulti and a good pickoff. If you just don't lose the lanes early on, it's still fine. I mean, th this hero doesn't need much items. You're gonna provide a lot of vision, kind of free free vision from your position oh. five. You have Venge as well, and uh, you have a have a hero that uh, has something that goes through the BKB as well. So. Yeah, it, it very much feels like you know that that Brewmaster that you mentioned. I think hits the nail on the head. Especially with the way the Beastmasters are building now with the Max Boar, Max Inner Beast. Yeah. A lot of them are just skipping Wild Axes until like level 10, level 11, level 11 even. So, uh, yeah, you're going to get the double boars. You're going to have that harass, the slow. Doesn't really matter that you're not getting any gold. Yeah, also you can s easily stack with the boar if oh, you yeah. have nothing else to do. That's a sick point, actually. We'll see, we'll see what FNG gets up to across the map. So they've rotated Ventral Spirit mid to deal with Mage for now, keeping that DK versus OD lane matchup. Top but bottom is where the aggression continues as Biver, helped out by the arrow of Hester Joe, does get a lot of damage into Madara, but the kill will go the way of Peksu. Defensive tri lane here for Vega. It's, it's protecting the AM, but is it protecting him enough? I don't know if you believe it or not. Uh, three heroes are stronger than two heroes. Amazing! That's some. I mean, you have Magnus with the uh, Skewer and uh, Empower, so you can Empower Winter Wyvern once he uses Arctic Burn. That's that's a lot of damage and harassment, and uh, that's a position 4 Shut task with Boots of Speed, so he does not have uh, a lot of region. And no Stout Shield either, right? Yeah. It's uh, a slight problem for them. That skitter, that Poison Touch. Adding all that damage, dropping about 150. He's got Tangos to go, but no Salve. A little bit of a struggle here for the Venge in this mid lane. 9-0 and Mage with 10 and 5. They've been moving around a lot, you know, the kind of nomadic laning phase here for both teams. But these two kind of early early game active core heroes in the Venge and the Dazzle, they like to have a good start and that neither of them are getting it. I mean, Dazzle definitely has an upper hand in this matchup. Once he uses the Poison Touch, Venge can't really trade hits. She just needs to run away and then Dazzle uh, we'll just deny and see us as much as possible. Look at it. She just needs to fully run back. Needs to also bring a lot more region on the mid lane. Do you want to do your uh, your EU maths, your Croatian maths on this again? Two nulls on Dazzle, one Wraith band on Venge. Definitely Dazzle better. That that's the third one. Oh, he's got three now, hey? Three one, three third one is flying right now. Also OD on the top lane has uh, three finished. Working on phase boots now, nine, it looks like. Bounty runes are about to spawn, though, Lacoste. And Vega prepped down bottom. Magnus will grab the northern one, Peksu the southern, as FNG actually sneaks one away from Kenzu up towards top. Looks like the two for two trade will happen still. Madara forced to blink away, thanks to the tag team of Tusk. Biver even losing a significant chunk of his mana there. Level two mana break from the AM. Yeah, really aggressive. I mean, he didn't even scale one point in a counter spell. I mean, nothing to remove, but uh, magic resistance is good. Yeah, just a little, little bonus point in that. A value point in counter spell could be nice. Uh, maybe next time he's still trying to look for this skewer. Losing out on the large creep in the camp. And Biver, he's level three, so he's got the snowball and the shards. Difficult to catch a Magnus and a Wyvern though, because they've got they've got ways to get over the ice shards here. I quite like that. Vega Squadron, they've got two supports that can actually retreat from danger, turn around, and swing into action still, going over the shards, maybe next time wants to play. Madara blocks the arrow from landing in onto either of his supports, tanks it nicely, and back to lane they go to farm. Spirit will have the shrine though. As they pop that one up themselves, Kezu, the solo Shriner, up top. Yeah, I'm looking at the item build on Antimate. This is pretty classic right now. Three raid bands. Uh, is gonna get the uh, Battle Fury, what it seems to be next. Uh, 
when you have position 4 Magnus, you are not forced to go into Battle Fury that early. You can just build Vlads for your own team, especially against uh, Venge, who lowers your armor. And uh, Anti-Mage right now is more mana-dependent uh, hero. If you're trying to fight a lot with the counter spell, it costs uh, a lot of mana. You're kind of blinking using counter spell as well, so one more item that gives you mana is going to be good. If you compare this to let's say a core Magnus, which is position 3, mm. you don't want to follow Anti-Mage that much because you're losing a lot of your own farm. You need to get uh, items, a Shadow Blade, a Yule Scepter, a Force Staff, so you need to farm as well. can't really just uh, go with Anti-Mage in jungle. You can't be an Empower no, Bot. No. Oh, we'll see what they get up to. I, I, I do like that move bottom that they just made a play out of, though. Peksu coming from the side, AM jumps immediately as the Arctic Burn hits. But they also have this, this ward giving so much vision, knowing that Marana completely alone, and Magnus just ropes in from the back, but they're catching in middle with an arrow quickly on. That cold embrace keeps Mage alive very far, and Shadow Wave will buy some time and take down Skitter with them as Biver and Hester Joe trying to get in on, on top of Peksu. This Winter Wyvern with Boots has just enough movement speed to trail away as Vengeful Spirit left with her illusion to CS. Oh, come on. You can do this, I believe. Sadly for him, he didn't have a point in Grave, level 7, but I like the build on Winter Wyvern. When you're playing uh, a position 5 Winter Wyvern, you want to have that one point in Cold Embrace before maxing your Splinter Blast. 1-2-1 one, one, on level 4 is mm. the best in most cases. And uh, look at Beastmaster. Just a casual earn, no boots of speed. He's level 4, trying to wrap around, but uh, they have a high ground ward. That's going to reveal him. And uh, Dragonite... Not, not an easy kill. Yeah. <laughs> one one three build yeah. on Dragon Knight. Yeah, good luck. He's got, he's got a bracer as well. Uh, what's his magic resist at right now? 32%. Good luck killing him. Middle, MNT Invis. Looking for that skewer onto Skitter. He's got himself another swap here to try and play around with. And in comes Peksu. They tried to make a play, but it feels like maybe next time they're just trying to bait out TPs more than anything else. And they get one of them into mid. And Tusk makes that rotation. They still want to try and catch the DK top. The boars, the hawk, the vision is coming. Nine can keep on chasing forward. He's got eight, now 10 stolen intelligence as Kezu pops the ulti, turns to stun. That's nine being held in place for a bit of time, but he's still going to find the kill on the That's Dragon Knight. Intelligence. Oh, look at that! Santa's Eclipse clears up the AM. Madara's come in with the help of MNT, but Mage also in trouble. No grave, still no grave. Shadow Wave will be there to keep him healthy, top top and maybe with potential to get some more TPs onto this shrine, but Vega just underestimating or not respecting the int stolen by the OD. Uh, that's that's the power of the uh, of the Hawk, actually. They had the vision on him, so they got an easy kill. I understand what Anti-Mage tried to do. He was level 6, so he wanted to TP and just blow up OD, who had the... Mess he, he was missing uh, more than 1,000 mana, so he could score an easy kill, but uh, had a lot of intelligence stolen, so... It could go both ways. My thanks. And there is that OD going Yashikaya. If you watch the couple of recent games uh, where Miracle played Anti-Mage, he's also really active as an Anti-Mage uh, early on. He gets level 6, rotates the mid, gets a kill, goes back to farming. Especially with the Wraith Band builds, right? With those, you're significantly tankier. With strength treads, three wraith bands, you can get in and out of fights with level three, level four blink or so. I, I, I think it was Charlie the other day. Saw him playing in uh, in JDL, and he went. He had a really he had a really bad lane, right? No farm, doing pretty poorly. Goes to jungle at like four or five minutes, and he's like, "Screw it, I'm just jungling here." He buys three, ra four wraith bands, treads, morbid mask, and he jungled. And yeah. then he went back for battle fury just to try and get that efficiency going. Yeah, Morbid Mask, I've seen this a uh, couple of times uh, on Anti-Mage. You just, uh, oh, I'm glad he's actually swapping to, to Vlad that I suggested early on. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's pretty much a prime decision there from Madara. Going to the Vlad, uh, what, what level's in power now, Lacoste? Three? You've got, you've got more than enough cleave to clear out these creep camps. You just need the sustain, and uh, Vlad is going to give you that. You're going to be able to have mana to jump uh, between the camps and also some armor and the lifesteal. So tier 1 tower has fallen. Look at the vision from Team Spirit. Uh, they're 
Kind of prepared for mid tower as well. They want to pressure it. Two points in aura on Venge. That's exactly what I was looking at. The Hawk sees the AM. They've got triple observer wards around mid and top. I mean, there's Radiant sentries here, but it looks like it came in before the obs ward was placed. So unlikely to get dewarded. And FNG is killing off observers and sentries as he walks himself along. But Mage middle swapped and stunned. The snowball to follow, but a sick Windows curse from Peksu is going to save Mage's life. Maybe even get a kill. Fairy fire into RP. The wall response keeping Skitter alive with the help of that nice little astral. And the OD wants to fight. Kills off two nine. Absolutely slams them. Maybe next time a matter of there six feet under and Mage will follow suit. Four dead. Vega Squadron getting wiped off the face of the map with only Kezu alive at top lane. As Vengeful Spirit, she had five wand charges. Yeah, but they could, they, she had the poison touch. If she used the wand charges, she would have lived. OD's Astral would come off cooldown and uh, she could have saved him. But this is the, the build that I like on OD. Power Threads, a uh, couple of Nulls and uh, Hezekiah. So more magical damage on your Sanity Eclipse and uh, Astral as well. 11.65, I mean, it's too early to start doing math, but that damage from Sanity's Eclipse was, you know, like 20, 25 int stolen, whatever it may have been. And though the kind of counters the three, three heroes on side of Vega, you have a Dragonite. This Dragonite uh, didn't do anything so far. He's farming a Blink Dagger. They need someone to start the fights. It's position four Magnus, so he's not going to have a Blink Dagger anytime soon. And you have OD against Radiance Winter Wyvern. If he uses Cold Embrace, he's, it's just a free Radiance intelligence. Yeah. Uh, for OD, same goes for a Grave Target. I mean, this is this is some smart next level 200 IQ wrinkly brain stuff from Team Spirit. They saw the D ward happen to the southwest here near the Ancients on the Radiant side of the map. And I think that FNG has said to them, hey, they've D warded. They're probably going to smoke. And they both TP away from there immediately. Kezu was, you know, taking them down the rabbit hole, juking and, you know, jiving through the trees. And they felt that something was wrong. They group up as five, Team Spirit shift to bottom, dodge the smoke gank. They maybe give away a tier one here, but the pressure they're putting on this Radiant side of the map is, is huge. Yeah, that's probably FNG's experience. He is level eight right now. Has Urn ready. He's also got Raw ready. Snowball. Raw response will come. Uh, and Magnus will go. That was very quick, much quicker than I expected, but OD, huge damage just from Arcane Orb. The problem is this OD has two save right now, four staff, I love the item build on him, plus an Astral, so Vega's gonna have a really hard time locking down anyone. Plus Snowball, Moonlight Shadow, Swap even. A swap from Skitter will catch the Dazzle Mage. Taken out of the game, and that arrow! Oh, oh ho, ho. God! Hester Joe in on top of the DK. Skips it with his second swap charge, and will open up a Winter's Curse here, but it only delays Biver. No stuns. Kezu is out of there, and Peksu actually going to be able to save the life of the DK. They need to buy more time. Anti Mage will need a lot of time actually to come to come into this game. He's sitting on the top of CS, second on the network chart, but. Uh, they could play this uh, super late game. It's it's an anti mage, so if they can just uh, stall the game, Magnus. Uh, he's actually close to a blink dagger. I just hope he doesn't buy uh, energy booster right now. Yeah, I think he's he's thinking the same thing, right? He, he can get it as a second item mm -hmm. because just he's he is really mana dependent hero. You can't just uh, be spamming empower. It's a, it's a really costy. Spell 90 and reverse polarity 200. Yeah. The uh, skitter, we didn't mention that. Uh, Vlad's as well on their side to boost some of their armor and also opens up the opens up the Roche. Yeah. See, this is this is the position three Venge build that I was talking about earlier. The kind of wraith band treads Vlad's build. Yeah. So I mean, skitter's kind of playing the three here, and then Hester Joe is more of the one. Yeah. It doesn't matter what, what role you're playing. It's uh, what your team needs right now yeah like th they feel I, I mentioned that uh, this is the timing i mentioned the battle fury timing on anti-mage between 15 and 20 minutes this is when they're most vulnerable and uh, they're building all these small items we can see beastmaster with the urn he's getting a uh, helm of the dominator they just want to finish the game lads on venge a uh, couple of raid bands on marana didn't buy anything any big item right now is good. 
also oh. getting defusal, which is uh, really effect who? effect cost the item. Who cares about items when you have level four vengeance or a level four inner beast and an OD as big as this? Kezu swapped in after a dragon tail onto nine arrow. Arrow does connect, and now the cold embrace, but the winter's curse stops the OD from racking up free intelligence off the back of it. Still holding on to that Aegis, of course, as the roar onto Dazzle, holding Mage in place, and that will be the end of him. Has buyback and is immediately forced to use it. Moonlight Sh Wait, what's happening in the back? Antimage has come in and very nearly just died. Madara has got to get himself the hell away back to Fountain. And Rax are taking a bit of a beating now. Team Spirit fully regened up. They're pretty much all full HP, full mana. Very limited expenditure here from the Dire team. Like you were mentioning, they don't rely on big ultis. They can fight all the time, and I love the pickup on Beastmaster. Urn of Shadow, most of the time it's uh, an item for Tusk, so they can be full HP all the time. Arrow misses, but it actually hits Dazzle. Dazzle, oh, there's the RP. MNT with the Shockwave back in as well. Madara's trying to do as much damage as he can into that stun, but it is not looking good enough. This OD for 9, absolute, absolutely huge. He cannot be stopped. He's got Aegis of the Immortal. Yashikai with a four staff and so many defensive tools behind him. That's the first lane of Rax claimed 18 minutes in. Team Spirit just roaring away to victory. They can't kill anything right now because they have a four staff OD and they have a double swap. A lot of armor as well. Murana, not an easy target to, to kill. And the Murana with the Fusal Blade plus Arcane Orb. They could easily just burn through Anti Mage's mana and he can't blink. They, they have only one defensive spell. Grave, sorry, they have been through Byron as well, but it's... It's hard. It, it's hard. It's it's not useful against OD. I always find, like, you make that point where, you know, anti-mage, mana reliant. I, I think that's one of the more interesting things about kind of agi carries nowadays. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. Because, like, Slark is another prime example, right? Against a PL, uh, as Pexu dies, we, we don't really mind too much. But, you know, there's this kind of back and forth counter on counter where, you know, anti-mage with battle fury or whatever counters PL in inverted commas, but then PL counters him if he can burn his mana quick enough. Yeah, agility heroes in general in this patch have a mana problem because there's no Ring of Aquila, so you need to have a lot of clarities in your backpack. Spam the mangoes. Yeah, this game is over. Yeah. I mean, I think so too. Madara's trying to shove out bottom. Still has the empower. They've got themselves an RP in 15 seconds, but still no blink. Kezu jumps in, but the OD is just wailing away at him. Look, down to half HP already. Nine still with ages in hands, four staffs away, turns to fight, and there goes the AM. Dead for 50 with no buyback. The Winter's Curse, it delays Nine from charging in and absolutely destroying your entire team, but it doesn't do much else outside of that. So Kezu, the third to fall here, even through the grave. Nine, what are we up to? 64, 60. eight, 72, 76. Oh, we've got a Sanity's Eclipse. Down it goes, and an ultra kill for nine. OD, really, really well played. Great pick from Team Spirit, and GG is called. Yeah, I expected this, uh, this to happen. Uh, too many big ulti cooldowns inside of Vega Squadron, and uh, Team Spirit, I think Vega, is looking really shaky. I saw some of their games uh, during the qualifiers and uh, they've been not looking good. Before, maybe it's um, kind of a curse of a sponsor. Before they got picked up, they were looking really good. They looked hot. Yeah, they, they did. But look at this, 20,000 network lead in 20 minutes, 1K per minute. It's, it's, it's a disaster for Vega. What's up with that win probability? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like it's dead even, and the game is like Vegas winning, and then mm, JK, just a little bit of just a little bit of a problem there down towards the end. They had problems with uh, with the everything. Lanes. Yeah, at at the start, uh, Team Spirit uh, kind of outsmarted them and uh, always had an upper hand in terms of uh, which hero is against uh, which. Yes, Dazzle is going to be against uh, Vengeful Spirit. Uh, he's going to get more farm, but. It, it's a core vent. She doesn't care. She builds Vlad's. She has the auras and she just sits there. Especially when you have an anti mage, right? That Dazzle is meant to be your space creator. Because the DK can only do so much. The Dazzle's got to run around killing shit like 24 7. But and it's not easy. You have a Dragonite who's, who's in offlane, which means he's not going to get uh, a lot of levels, a lot of items early on, and he's not going to be that efficient. And. 
then there's a Magnus who also needs to follow Anthemage to increase his farming capabilities. So, kind of kind of hard game, I would say. Uh, Team Spirit won won this one before the game even started. Yeah, it felt like lots of little elements coming into a draft that work well on their own. Yeah, but not well together here against what Team Spirit have. I, I still love that Odie last pick though. That was. Uh, I, so, it was a great pick. I mean, FNG support beast. Like, there's so many things that need pointing out and mentioning from Team Spirit here. It, it, in a 20 minute game, it gets difficult, honestly. But we've got a full series, a best of three, potentially two more games coming up. So we'll take a short break. F finger guns came out. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. It's just on the finger. Right. Five minute break so I can stop doing that. It's the monster. It's the monster energy. See you guys in a little bit. Deary me.